I am truly grateful today for those of you who came. Some of you traveled many miles to be here. Some of you traveled some back roads that I know were not real well plowed. Some of you came because I have been your pastor in the past. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Some of you came because you're my friends. I do have a few. And some of you came to see this new person who's been appointed to be district superintendent. Whatever your reason, I thank you for coming. I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about names. How many of you like the name your parents gave you? We got some. How many of you at some point in your life wanted to change your name? Yeah. That's a little more honest. That's what I thought. Now, I don't have anything in particular against the name Marion other than People don't know how to spell it. <laughs> I've spent my life correcting people. My name is spelled with two A's. M-A-R-I-A-N, not I-O-N. And, and Jerry did not plan this this morning, or this afternoon, but people tend to get my name mixed up. I say, I'm Marion, and they'll call me Marilyn which Jerry did just this afternoon. <laughs> or Miriam, or Marianne, or Mary. They, they can't get it on that first listen. When I was little, I lived outside of Philadelphia, and everybody shortened names there, and I was Mar. Just, just Mar. And then I moved to Gettysburg, and they didn't shorten names, and they kept calling me Marion. And then one day, and again, this happened today, this afternoon, somebody, Barbara, what did you sing, sing to me? Marion, Madam Librarian. <laughs> Marion, Madam Librarian. I, I'm nearly ashamed to admit this, but I once punched a kid for calling me that. <laughs> But when it comes down to it, Marion's not so bad. My older brother, had he been a girl, his name would have been Harriet. Can you see me being Harriet? Yeah, I didn't think so. We tend to live in to our names. We tend to live in to what people call us. Have you ever heard of a professional athlete named Percival? Or a computer genius named Brutus? It just doesn't work that way. There was a man named Abram. And one day, God said to Abram, pack your stuff up and move. I'm not telling you where you're going, but you're just going to go and I'll give you clues along the way. The first amazing race. And after Abram had been doing this for a while, God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you, and I'm going to change your name. I'm going to call you Abraham, father of many nations. Now, God was either up to something, or he had a very cruel sense of humor. To call a man with no children, whose wife was far beyond childbearing years, and himself as good as dead, and I'm quoting scripture there, 
to call a man like that the father of many nations. God was getting ready to do something wonderful. Abraham had to trust and he had to wait. Two things that we're not always very good at. He had to trust that God meant what he said. That God was a God of wonders. Amazing wonders. And that God could do the impossible. It wasn't easy. Sarah tried to help God along with the whole Hagar and Ishmael thing. And that tore at Abraham's heart. And then Isaac was born, and God said to him, I want you to take Isaac and sacrifice him. And again, Abraham had to trust. It's hard when God changes your name, when God changes how people call you to grow into what God wants you to be. God has called me to go from being Rev, and that's how many of you know me, and somebody asked me the Sunday I announced my appointment, well, do we have to call you Super Rev now? <laughs> I don't know, does this work as a cape? <laughs> I heard the things that Bishop Park lovingly said about me. And I was kind of looking around to see who he was talking about. <laughs> There's a lot of expectations that come with this responsibility. And I do rely on these folks over here to support me and encourage me. And I do rely on you folks sitting out here to support and encourage and pray for me. And I do rely wholly on God because he's got to be so up to something. I'm not sure I've figured it out yet. And like Abraham, I have to trust and I have to wait and I have to follow God's leading even though I'm not 100% sure where it is I'm going. There was another fellow in Scripture who had a name change. A guy named Simon. Simon was a fisherman. Simon had a lot of enthusiasm, and sometimes Simon got things absolutely right, and other times he got them horribly wrong. But he did it with enthusiasm. And one day, Jesus said to him, I tell you, you are rock. Now, I have a pet peeve with all the people who translate scripture. Because in the Greek, it says, you are Petros. And Petros translated means rock, but we never translate it as rock. We turn it into Peter. And we miss the reality. Jesus called him rock. And he said, rock on you. I will build the church. Now, up until that point, he had been more rocky than rock. 
a little less solid, perhaps, than Jesus would have wanted him to be. He had to grow into becoming rock. He had to find out what worked and what didn't. The early church started out with the disciples going to the synagogues and trying to do things the way they'd always done it. But soon they found themselves on the streets and with the people and among the Gentiles. Because that's where God showed them they needed to go. We live in a place called Nipa. For those of you who are not from here, Nipa is Northeast PA. Took me a while to figure out what Nipa was. But that's where I live now. And here in Nipa, we've had some different names. We've been the Wyoming Conference. We've been the Wilkes-Barre District and the Scranton District. And then for things that seemed, reasons that seemed so out of our control, we became the Susquehanna Conference and the scranton Wilkesbury District. And that hasn't always been easy to claim those new names. We kind of liked the old names and the old ways. But my friends, any time God changes our names, God's up to something. And I believe God is up to something here in Nipa. There are charges that are realigning and changing their names. There are churches that are merging and changing their names. There are churches that are finding new ways to minister, who are thinking about changing their names so that they can be seen by new people who need to hear the message of Jesus Christ. We've changed a lot of names. But there's a name we haven't changed. We are now, we have been, and we will continue to be God's people. And when God's people sing his praise. It's time for wonders. When God's people lift their voices and proclaim that Jesus lives, it's time for wonders. God is not done with Nepa. God's just getting started with us, folks. God is just getting started with us. It takes trust. It takes patience. It takes courage. It takes listening to God's voice. How will we together grow into our names, 
District Superintendent, Scranton-Wilkes-Barre District, Susquehanna Conference. How will we take God's promises and forge them into a future with God's help living out the Great Commission to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Jesus said to Simon, you are rock, and on this rock I will build my church. Ecclesia. And the word ecclesia, my friends, does not describe a building. It's people. It's a gathering of people. And whether it's a Friday night or a Wednesday morning or a Sunday afternoon, whenever God's people gather, it's time for God's wonders. It's time for God's wonders. Are we ready and willing and able to be a part of God's wonders? With God being my helper, I am. Are you? Let me hear an amen.